To get started with any regression model present in the library, we begin by importing the files we often need. We start by importing any of the regression models present in the class. In this example, we import the decision tree model from the decision tree folder. We then import preprocessing.mqh file. This file has the classes for normalizing the input data to be within the small range of values. The matrix extend.mqh file possesses additional functions for manipulating the vectors and matrices. The matrix.mqh file holds all the necessary functions for measuring the performance of all machine learning models in this library. For more information on these helper files, read the documentation on the repository main page and the wiki page. In this example, I use the decision tree found under the folder decision tree. However, the steps and procedures discussed in this video can be applied to all models of this kind throughout this library. After importing all the necessary MQH files, we need to instantiate the non-static classes from our files imported above. It is always a good practice to call a model with an object pointer asterisk. This way you can pass the arguments for your regression model instead of using the default values. For our decision tree, we can set the minimum number of samples required to split a decision tree node to true and the maximum depth of the tree to 5. Now that we have initialized our regression model, we need a dataset for it to run from. To train any machine learning model, we need to split the data into two, the independent variables and the target variable. In the context of predicting the housing prices, Independent variables could include various factors such as the number of rooms and the size of the house in square feet. These independent variables are usually stored in a two-dimensional matrix. The target variable in this case would be the historical prices of the house sold in the past. Meanwhile, the target variable is a one-dimensional data and can be stored in an array-like vector. In this example, we are going to use the open, high, and low as our independent variables to try to predict what the close price could be. Here, the open, high, and low prices are the independent variables, the close price being the target variable. So we start by collecting the historical prices and assigning this data into vectors. After collecting all the variables into their respective vectors, we can declare a matrix named X with a number of rows equals to 1000 bars and 3 columns. This matrix will be used to store all the independent variables. Shortly after defining the X matrix, we add the open, high and low vectors to the first, second and third columns of the X matrix respectively. We can then declare a vector named y and assign it the closing price values. Essentially, the model is trained on one dataset and tested on a separate dataset that it hasn't seen before. This allows us to verify if the trained model will perform well on new, unseen data. So we declare X train and X test matrices for storing the predictors. We also declare the Y train and Y test vectors for storing the values to be predicted. Then we define a double variable named train size and assign it 0.7. This is a percentage value for the data to be used for training purposes. It can be a value from 0 to 1. 0 for 0% and 1 for 100%. The value of 0.7 in this case means 70% of the data will be used for training while the rest 
30% will be used for testing. Additionally, we can define an integer variable named random state. This variable dictates how randomly the train test split matrices function splits the data into the new matrices and vectors. Using the train test split matrices function from matrix extend, we split the X and Y data into X train and Y train for the training pair and into X test and Y test for the testing pair. We can set a breakpoint below this function to monitor the newly obtained variables in debug mode. As can be seen, the X train has 700 rows of data out of 1000 data we primarily collected, which is 70% of the data. The rest 30% of the data, which is equal to 300 rows, has been assigned to the X test matrix. This is a very crucial process. We need to normalize the X train and X test matrices. For more information on this, kindly refer to the pre-processing documentation on this repository on GitHub. By calling the fit transform method from one of the selected scalar present in the pre-processing file, we can normalize the training data and return the new normalized data. The key here is to call fit transform for the training data and transform function for the rest of the data coming forward. The fit transform function trains the scalar algorithm and transforms the data, returning new values, while the transform function only transforms the data after the fit function has been called. The order of calling this function here is very important, so keep that in mind. All the functions starting with the word fit are the functions responsible for training all the algorithms and model throughout this library. This doesn't apply only to regression model, but to all kind of models in the library. So by calling the fit function, we can train this model. To test the trained model, we code the model to make predictions on the training data, then compare those predictions to the actual values from the training data. The common metric for testing regression models is the R squared. It can be called from the static class named matrix found under matrix.mqh. We do the same thing for the testing samples. As you can see, the model was approximately 99% accurate on both the training and the testing samples. Now that we have a trained regressor AI model smart enough to make decent predictions, we can use it to make predictions from the Forex market. To easily get current information from the market, we need to use the MQ rates array we start by defining the MQ rates array, giving it the name rates just above the only init function. Inside the only init function, we can set this array as series. This makes the price information in a time series order where the recent price information from the market will be located at index zero from this array. Inside the on tick function, we copy the rates starting from the previous close bar at the index of one to three bars prior. We then define a vector named X and assign to it the open, high and low prices from the recently closed bar. Their order in this vector must be preserved as they were arranged in the training data. We also have to normalize this new data in a similar way we normalize the training data by using the same scalar instance used during training. We call the predict function from the model to get the predictions. 
Finally, we can comment the predicted closing price on the main chart. And that is how you can get the prediction for all the regression models present in the class. The code used in this video can be found under the examples folders on GitHub. Check it out. Classifier models work similarly to regression models. The differences are the target variables and the metrics for assessing the performance. Instead of collecting the target variable, this time we construct the target variable using our human intellect. Suppose we want to train the model to provide the trading signal to notify us when we should buy or sell. We create the target variable using the logic whenever the closing price is greater than the opening price in historical price that is a buy signal and vice versa for a sell signal. We do the same procedures for splitting the data and training the model as we did in the regression model. When it comes to testing the performance of a classifier model, we can call the model to make predictions on the training data, then compare those predictions to the actual values from the training data. We do the same thing for testing samples. The common metric for testing classifier models is the classification report. It can be called from the static class named metrics found under metrics.mqh. The classifier model was 64% accurate on the training sample and 59% accurate on the testing sample. So to use this classifier model for making prediction, instead of using the predict function used in regression models, the classifier models have their own variants for making predictions. The predict bin function returns the predicted class in classifier models in this library, while the predict proper function returns probabilities. In this case, the predict bin function would return the signal either 1 for buy or 0 for sell. This resembles the classes present in the target variable we created. The predict proper function would return a vector, let's say 0 0.8 for buy and 0 0.2 for sell, showing the probabilities for buy and sell signals respectively. 